Hey guys, in this video I want to talk a bit about Compile Heart and Idea Factory. Just a brief story of their beginnings, what kind of games you can expect out of them, a bit of my experience playing their games, and some of their future plans. Let's begin with Compile as it was a company founded in April 7, 1982. And with all honesty, I didn't hear that much about them aside from Aleste, which was a series that focused in shoot em ups, similar to Ikaruga, just to put a much more modern example of those games. And they were also known for a series named Puyo Puyo, which is a kind of Tetris that rose from the main series Mado Monogatari, which were first person dungeon crawlers or crawling games similar to Chrono Trigger, with a catchy combat theme that pretty much got used in every entry, as far as I know. For the Western audience, we didn't receive many of their games compared with all the releases they had, aside from some shooters and the already mentioned Puyo Puyo series. Unfortunately for them, in November 2003 they had to close due to bankruptcy, dividing the team into companies. One of them, Compile Heart, which is supposed to be the Spiritox successor, and Milestone Inc., the shoot'em up successor, which got closed in March 2013 because the president got arrested. As for Idea Factory, they were founded in October 1994, and as far as I knew, they mainly created Otome games, with a subsidiary known as Automate being able to release up to 20 games per year, most of them, of course, exclusive to Japan, and word goes around saying that they had some negative connotations around 2006, and later they added Compile Heart as another subsidiary, where they got known for entries like Hyperdimension Neptunia and Record of Agaris World. Here, what is worth mentioning is that some of the main ideas and perhaps the main drive to create that particular kind of games is because one of the presidents had the vision that video game marketed was always so complex, needing his strategies here and there, so they ended up throwing away the classic ideas and started creating those peculiar series that many of us know nowadays. As for the projects they have talked about, perhaps the most influential is Galapagos RPG, which main premise was to make games with a Japanese style for Japanese gamers. In this channel I have already talked about some of those games, like Fairy Fencer, Death and Request 1 and 2, and Dragon Star Warrior. Now, Compile Heart and Idea Factory have left quite the mark in RPGs because a good number of people criticize them as the devil of RPGs, saying that they focus a lot on fan service, shitty games, reusing stuff, and so on. I will say that some of the hate peaks were around 2015 while many Japanese companies were struggling with PC ports. While Idea Factory and Compile Heart were releasing a good number of them each year, and despite all the crises, they are still out there producing games. At the end of the day, most of their games are niche because of the amount of fan service they have, and it is well known that one of their first good hits for the beta was Monster Mon Peace, a quite questionable with a Rubin game. And here it is worth mentioning that a clash of cultures was bound to happen because of those peculiar entries, but that is a discussion for another video. Nonetheless, they also struggled at first, but somehow they pulled off a quite interesting move releasing a good number of games for the beta. Here some people may say that they have huge sales, but that is questionable. If we look at their numbers as a non-AAA studio, they definitely did decent within that niche market, reason why many of their games are being re-released once again. For the beta, the one that had a good number of sales was Moero Chronicle, within around 61,000 sales. Some other entries were around 20 to 40,000 in average, so it is kind of impressive to see that they are still out there, while many other Japanese companies have to close doors. So, what kind of games can we expect out of them? As said, most of their games are quite a niche, have huge fan service, and the general consensus is that they are simple slash bad regarding their gameplay. As for the people that still give them a chance, the general consensus says that they are definitely improving as years pass, polishing some stories, and improving significantly the gameplay. Also, some others state that their games are a good way to shut your brain off for a while and have a relaxing playing session. And I say for those who give them a chance because I have read a good number of times comments like I know they exist, but I don't bother to look at what they have to offer, 
which is a valid comment at the end of the day in a world that works with offer and demand. So those are the general comments you can hear about their games. As for me and my experience, what I can say is that it is a bit of a roller coaster. While it is true that some games have been polished in a good way, sometimes they radically change their usual strategy, turning into games that could have been better if kept the same premise. As for the kind of stories you can get out of them, I would like to use this image with Ed's axis as serious and dumb, and Y axis as not perverted and questionable. I would like to use a game like Metal Gear Solid and The Evil Within as reference for video games that, for the main plot, are serious and they don't precisely go out of their way to do questionable stuff, so we could place them in that position. Now let's take a look at Dead End Request. It swings between dumb and serious moments, but for the most part I would say it is likely go serious. Dead End Request 2 has some really dumb moments, but once you get past the mid of the game it goes quite mature in many ways, but also they have their fair share of fan service. If we want to contrast things here right away we can use the classic Genkai Toki series, Lai Muero Crystal Age, where the story is definitely something dumb and it can be questionable in many ways. Record of Agar's War has a much more consistent story with once again fan service, but not as often as other series. So as you can see their consistency with the games goes all over the place, but beware that sometimes their games radically change from something dumb to really serious, and from really simple gameplay to stupidly complex, so I'll say that they have a bit for everyone. And what do they hold for the future? They haven't been a AAA company for 28 years, and most likely they are not going to be in a while. But recently they have stated that they are working on newer series like Dead End Request Zion, which is supposed to be a story between Dead End Request 1 and 2, most likely explaining what happens in that other world. Also they are working in the third main entry, and seems like they want to release once again Mado Monogatari games, so it seems they are still kicking with different ideas for us to enjoy or not care so much, wherever you stand. I hope you found this video informative, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.